All right. Block party's back. Post Super Bowl. Packed on some packing questions today. Your host, Mike Wall. Find me at MikeWall68 on uh, X. Process to perform on Instagram. Check out our YouTube page, Process to Perform. You can get all the uh, on my block station or on my block channels from this past season. Check out the new block party stuff. Subscribe, like, rate, and review, please. Caffeine and Kilos, come sponsor me. Just give me some free coffee and a t shirt or two. Our show is sponsored by Bet Online. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs. Basketball, including pro and college hoops throughout the year with the up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all your best player props pools. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Head to BetOnline today to become part of the team. And remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. <clears throat> and right real quick before that, we start the Packers of Super Bowl, I nailed this game. Unfortunately, I was three for four, so I didn't get the big payoff. But I had the Chiefs score. I said on the show, Chiefs got to score 24 to win. They scored 25. Ended up winning 25-22 uh, in overtime. I uh, had Kelsey on the over. I had McCaffrey on the over for yards. And damn George Kittle, who's my favorite player in the game, did not have a stat stuffer. Contributed, as he always does, but did not have a stat stuffer. I'll tell you what, I've never seen I've never seen what happened to Dre Greenlaw happen as a and kind of as randomly as it did. And, and especially with such a absolutely vital piece of that San Francisco defense and the impact that that had on the rest of the game cannot be overstated. It was seismic because that dude, you know, he pairs up with, with Fred Warner to be, you know, arguably the top, if not you know, the top two linebacker duels in the entire national football league. Of course, talking about Roquan and Patrick uh, Queen over in, in Baltimore, but just totally tipped the balance of the game, especially when Andrew Reed kind of figured things out with Patrick Mahomes and, how do you bet against Patrick Mahomes? I, I saw a stat today that said going into the fourth quarter overtime with one minute left to go and down like seven points or down or da- needing a needing a score to tie or win. Patrick Mahomes is only the play the only player in the history of the National Football League that is perfect in those situations. He's seven for seven. Tom Brady's not perfect. Joe Montana's not perfect. Joe Burrow's not perfect. Patrick Mahomes. Excuse me, Patrick Mahomes is the only player that is perfect seven for seven in those situations. So you know, you read a stat like that and you go, anybody who'd bet against him is a fool. But what do I know? I use, I lose, I usually bet with my heart and not my, uh, well, I bet with my wallet. But I bet with my heart and not my head. This time I did because I didn't care about either game, either team. And uh, the only person that uh, let me down was my favorite player, George Kittle. Moving on, Packers, big offseason, big idea. So we're going to do a couple of just overview things today. Then I got a lot of listener questions. First and foremost, thank you so much for the guys who hit me back on X to ask those questions. Some really good stuff here. Hopefully, I have some amp- answers that will uh, uh, bang around in that noodle of yours a little bit. I think the first thing we want to talk about is big decisions. And I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. First thing, do you bring back back Tiari? And I think the first question is, does he want to be here? Does he want to go ride golf carts with Aaron Rodgers in New York? Because they've got a great defense. Um you could argue that they're a healthy Aaron Rodgers in an offensive line away from being, you know, really, really big time Super Bowl contenders uh, in that division. I know that, that Buffalo has obviously is having success there now. I, I'm not a, I, I used to be, I was a much bigger believer in Miami pre this 2023 than I am now. Um, not that I could, I could completely be wrong on that. This is how I feel about it. Patriots are not going to be um, contending this year. So you look at the Jets, they've got a real shot there to, to fight for that division with Aaron Rodgers at the helm. And, um, you know, what are they missing? They're missing they're missing a really quality left left tackle. They're missing some pass pro. They're going to get a Vera Tucker back. Um, but Makai Becton, like Makai, Makai Becton, for people who don't know, is like six foot nine, and he fluctuates between 360 and 400 and some odd pounds. And at 360, you're a monster. But if you start creeping up with the donuts and you're around 400, it's just you watch the Miles Gate, Miles Garrett tape versus him, and it's just almost like it's the one, it's the one place where being six foot nine doesn't help. 
when you get your play, because everybody turns into Dwight Freeney against you. Like they all have leverage and they're all a little bit quicker and they all get to your hip. So he might want to do that. Now people don't, I, I think in Green Bay, because, you know, well, Jordan Love didn't get sacked the last couple of games. People don't understand what Bakhtiari means to that offense because Jordan Love didn't get sacked. But what a premier elite left tackle, blindside protector, or just let's just pick across the line one dominant offensive lineman that you can lean on, whether you don't have to give that person help, a la, uh, a la Laramie Tunzel, or a guy that just demolishes people in the run game, a la Trent Williams. Like the difference that that makes on your offense, like cannot be measured in dollars and cents because it just opens up another facet of your playbook. And we do not have that right now. Now you've got some guys that are serviceable. You do not have that on this team. Sheed Walker, is he going to be a starting left tackle in this league? Is he a swing tackle next year? Obviously depends a lot on what they do here and and the decisions they make going forward in the draft. But I think the big thing is his cap number is 40 plus million. I think they can save 21 million on the cap if they release him or trade him. That's probably what they're going to do. Probably release earlier than trade. Who's going to want to take that cap hit. But if Bach wanted to be back, if he wanted to finish his career in Green Bay, because he understands how special that is, he could do a lot of things to restructure his contract. He could could take a huge pay cut like Aaron Jones did last year. There's a lot of things. You just don't know how dedicated he is to this group. Now that, you know, he's the older guy. Um, this is a wave of youth. Matt LaFleur is certainly not Mike McCarthy in terms of how they get down. Um, Aaron's gone. You know, I, I just I just think there's a lot of questions to ask from Bakhtiari's. In my opinion is, if he wanted to stay and he was willing to make it work, you do everything you can to, 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 to re-sign him. I just don't think that's going to happen. Maybe the second most important thing is Aaron Jones bringing him back. He was undoubtedly the best player last year. He restructured um, last season, took a $5 million pay cut. Um, and then now he's got a $15 million cap. It, so he's got to restructure that. What haircut is he willing to take after the season, after he just proved that he's the best player on offense on the field last year without Bakhtiari? Um, and I think the big question there is Aaron Jones is the kind of guy that clearly wants to be in, in green and gold for the rest of his life, but he's so good. If his age is out there feeling around, at 29 or 30 years old, looking like he looking like he looks. Can another team come in and offer him 20 guaranteed? Like, can I give you a, a two-year, $24 million contract with 20 million guaranteed and you just walk? Is that worth it? Because I think right now he took I, I think he he made somewhere around 10 this year. I could be wrong on that. But he's certainly not, they're not going to give him for 15. I I wouldn't. If I was him, I wouldn't take a $5 million pay cut or like he did this year because, quite frankly, like he's he's too good. He's too valuable. Um, and I don't know what that market is, but you do have to at – some, at some part, you do have to look at like, well, Christian McCaffrey is, you know, the best running back in the league. He's, he was paid – I know his cat numbers are different now, but at one point it was looking like a $17 million a year deal. He's a pretty important player to San Francisco 49ers. Um, Pacheco – it was a pretty important player in the in the for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the running back position, Jamar Gibbs, what he did up uh, yeah, as a as a as a first round pick in in Detroit. Bijan Robinson, what he's going to turn out to be if Atlanta gets the, their stuff together. There's guys out there that you're going. This could be the way to elevate that market again, you know. And he's been relatively healthy. I know he was hurt for spells. But if you bring in another guy, and we'll talk about you know AJ, but if you bring in another guy that can can, can help shoulder load until playoff time, there's no doubt that you know the Green Bay Packers are six, seven points a game better with Aaron Jones in the you know fifty yards better a rushing a game when Aaron Jones in. I mean, there's he's there's so much better with him there. So you hope they bring him back. You just it's again, I think it's more on Aaron than it is on on Green Bay. Number three, Kenny Clark has a $27 million cap hit. Cap hit. And, and the real question for me is, does he fit into a half – how do you say it? Halfleys? Say it Halfleys from now on. I'm probably saying that wrong. How do you fit into Halfleys defense as a pass rusher? So now you're in a 4-3. So the idea being that you're going to be either the nose tackle, penetrating three technique. I would imagine they go look for a guy who's like 340 at nose tackle. There's three forty guys that can move now, or if you're going to play a two eye and a three technique. But Kenny just looks to me like he's he's always looked this way to me that he should be a penetrating three technique. But you know he 
you're so far down in your career. It's something you can't rush the pasture, but you're not an expert at it. And, you know, the other thing is this, like potentially in the off season. So can you adjust? And do they want to they want to bank on him adjusting? Because they can restructure it, no problem. But it is $27 million this year, and that's too much. This is the mother load of potentially a free agent. Now, most of these guys aren't going to come out, right? But you've got Chris Jones. He's not leaving Kansas City. But, you know, we're just playing the what-ifs. Justin uh, Matabuke, who just had a monster year. And I've watched t- tons of tape on that guy from Baltimore. Unbelievable. Christian Wilkin- Wilkins from Miami. He's probably not leaving, but he is an absolute dog. Um, Leonard Williams is a great player. DJ Reader, he's, he was hurt a little bit last year, but DJ Reader is a is a monster player. Grover Stewart is a nose tackle for Indy, but that, I've seen that dude do some really impressive things on the field. So you're talking about three guys from from style of defense that are at a higher level than Kenny, and then you're talking about six guys total that at, at very least are on the level. So. Grover maybe being the outlier there because he's a nose tackle. Fair enough. But the one thing I would I would say with Kenny, what Kenny's got going for him, if he wants to sort of dictate terms here, is that you are not going to replace what Kenny Clark brings to this team on the field, in the locker room, in the meeting room. You're not going to replace that in the draft. You are not going to replace. You picked up a ton of guys in the draft recently on the defensive line and, and defensive end positions. You've got a young, a relatively young room. I, I don't know if they split up DNs and D tackles in that room. I don't know how that whole all that works in that building. But he's got to be the undoubted leader in that room. And he's a performer on the field. And he's a Packers guy. And you're going to lose leadership. You're going to lose experience. You're going to use grit and toughness. You're going to lose all that if you try to draft a guy instead of trying to replace him with a free agent. So the question would be, how many of those guys do you think are going to be out they if if let's say if they just drop if they cut him they're screwed they don't have they don't have a replacement for Kenny Clark on the team so so the question is i mean and not replace him so of those top 3 that are all probably statistically at least better suited for a 4-3 defense um right now out the box are any of them leaving and could we afford them or do we want to afford them with Goody that's the answer is probably no and then the other three of those guys, um, I, let's just talk about Leonard and DJ. I think Leonard and DJ are both phenomenal players. I think DJ Reed is a phenomenal player. Um, but you're kind of getting the same guy as Kenny. I don't know that he's better than. And so you just start going like, you know, again, the Packers probably just have to – probably have to give him three more years of an extension. He's going to get paid a little bit more. And that's the cost of doing business in the National Football League. Jordan Love is in that – we you had him in that sweet spot. This is the problem with drafting and then city is, you know, historically you look at Mahomes – or not Mahomes. Um, you look at like uh, uh, Russell Wilson in Seattle. I think they won their second year. Joe Burrow goes second year, goes to the championship. Those guys always – Tom Brady, Super Bowl. The buys the staff time, which this team isn't worried about, but it allows you to stockpile and get so much kind of value out of that rookie contract. When you sit, whether you're Pat Mahomes, whether you're Jordan Love, now you get to the end of this this first contract and you got to figure out, okay, am I going to bring, the, am I going to pay this guy this year, next year, what's it going to look like? He's, you know, Jordan Love's going to ask for top five money. He's probably going to get it because that's what the market dictates. Um, currently, he's only a twelve point four million dollar cap hit. And they've got young players everywhere, so they're kind of, they're kind of built. If they do pay them on offense, if like let's say you split the cap 50-50 down the middle, which I know we don't do, but let's say you did, you're kind of built on offense right now to handle what it looks like to pay him a ton of money. But when you pay your quarterback, everything changes like that window that everybody talks about that's so covered in the national football league is gone. I think it's, you know, to be fair, it's probably gone now anyways for the green Bay Packers, as far as you're going to have to pay a left tackle. What did happen there? That's crazy. It You, you have to pay a left tackle at some point, whether it's back to or somebody else. I mean, you're going to have a high price guy come in, but they do have all the skill positions. Aaron Jones is going to make a little bit of money, but not a lot. All your skill positions are paid for for a couple of years. 
And so the whole tag, no tag thing, you know, for me, it kind of feels like a rip the bandaid off moment and maybe get the most money you can right now out of Jordan love, as far as let you even front load this thing and just make it as cap friendly as you can. When you know that you're going to have to resign this group of receivers, this group of tight ends, et cetera, et cetera. You still got some work to do on defense, but you know, it's again, it's how good he wants to split the pie as far as what the salary cap looks like. I'd pay him right now. So I guess what I'm saying, long and short of it, it's only going to be more money next year. Uh, Devondre Campbell happily knows, uh, McDuff, Alexander McDuffie, my, one of my favorite guys from BC. So you kind of look at it and go, probably a good fit for his defense. Um, he's going to love Quay Walker's athleticism and what he brings to the table. I'm sure he's going to look at Quay and go, man, I can make this guy, like just from a physical standpoint, if we can get him a little bigger up top, be a little more physical in the run game, kind of we've seen a lot of tape now on what he's really good at and what he's not good at. If we can accentuate the good stuff and then like try to show up a little bit, go from like a, you know, a, a C minus to a B plus on some of the other stuff, this guy's going to be amazing. They're going to still predominantly run out of a four, two uh, defense. You're going to have two guys on the field. So Devondre, you know, he said two years of, he had the, the first team all pro year injuries, decline in performance, um, Kind of some some commentary and this and that, that that maybe rubbed some people the wrong way. If I was Halfley, I would be looking at trying to find a big-bodied safety that can play in the box, even more so than you know having that really high-priced you know third linebacker. Anyways, in fact, in other, and what I'm saying is, I think the way the, the NFL is going, if I could get a Cam Chancellor-ish type player, an Adrian Wilson-ish type player for throwback Arizona Cardinals, absolute unit. By the way. Cam Chancellor before it was Cam Chancellor. It was Adrian Wilson. Guy was unbelievable. Um, but if you can get somebody like that and make him part of the defense and still run your nickel and bring him down, now you got everything you want. And then the last one's Eric Stokes. So I'm, I'm saying Devondre Campbell's probably gone. And I'm saying he probably wants to go, to be fair. Last one, Eric Stokes. What are you looking on the rookie deal? He's only 3.8 uh, cap hit this year for a starting, you know, corner. That's not much. You know, a lot of people want to label him a bust and this and that. And that's such, I mean, that's just such BS, you know, and I know he hopefully he doesn't listen to that noise. I would say this, you drafted him for a reason. It's been up and down, but the whole secondary has been up and down. In fact, ever since Joe Barry came in, the whole defense has been up and down. So now you got somebody that is coming out of, of BC uh, out of a college program, college, usually you, you kind of equate that to development. Now, the big question with everybody when you bring in a, a college guy is, are the players going to gravitate towards that style, that development style, the way he talks? Is, and he's going to have to make some adjustments. They're going to have to make some adjustments. Are guys going to be willing to do that, understanding that they're not nearly as good as they should be? And I think, I think Eric Stokes is in that list of like, hey, if you're hungry and you want to get better, I'm sure that one of the criteria for success that this Halfley's coming in with is I've got to improve the play of specifically these players. And Eric Stokes is on that list. So I keep him and just see if we can pull the best out of him with the new defensive coordinator and his new staff. I mean, that's like, that's just like a no brainer to me. You've got him, Darnell Savage. You got a couple things going on. Um, who's going to be the first of those eight first round draft picks to leave green Bay but I, I think you keep Eric Stokes, and I think you see what you can pull out of him from this new D quarter. It's, it just makes sense to me. So those are the six. 